All right, everybody, here we are at the table again, and it's just basically another video about some cool minis that I found on eBay. Today we are looking at the, uh, the miniatures from a board game known as uh, The Awful Orphanage. It took me a good while to look these up and find out what they were. I just liked them, and I thought they were really cool. Basically, one of the reasons why I mainly bought these is because... Uh, I have a big collection of townsfolk miniatures, and uh, but there's not many, not that many children miniatures, so I thought this would be good because I the the kids are here are the ones that draw me to it originally, because I thought you know they uh, they're literally the orphan it's literally a game it's an orphanage game so basically it's like I don't know the full details of the game but it has a lot of uh, children miniatures so I thought it'd be a good you know, good way to pick them up. One set that I was I was hoping to get, but I wasn't able to get, is one of them had a little girl miniature, basically kind of inspired by Alice from Alice in Wonderland. She had a little teacup, frizzy hair, and she even had like a little Cheshire cat look and thing beside her, and it was adorable. But let's just say the person that was the the people that were on there, they wanted it far better than I did. I heart they wanted it far more than I did because anytime I threw out a bid, it was like a punch in the face of a counter bid. I mean, I, what didn't even they didn't even hesitate. So, you know. Uh, good luck to whoever won that, but we're gonna take a look what I got here today. I'm gonna start off with, uh, well, the main reasons why I bought it with the kids. Some, of th I'm gonna start off with the two that I'm having a little trouble figuring out what to do with, but I'm, I'll find something. I might, ju I might just give these to my nephew because he he's taken a liking to having little miniatures as well. This first one, little focus. This first one is like a uh, a little boy in like on a train like a homemade train kind of thing going around here he's uh, I've seen the the uh, card art of this one I don't know the names by memory but uh, he has like a, a little fake cigar in his mouth and he's got like uh, br shoe shine brushes tied to his face to be sideburns and it's it's just really cute it's like you know like they've he just ramshackled this train together to get around I thought it was really cute. We'll figure out something to do with that later. The next one here, I thought this was uh, this one was uh, this one's interesting. It's like a uh, I saw the card art for this one as well. I think he's like a Kickstarter thing. I've seen some pictures of the Kickstarters for these. He's a uh, he's one of the orphanage. He's one of the orphans, but he basically believes himself to be a he wants to he basically dresses up as a knight. He's got like a bucket for a helmet, a mop as a spear. He's got a wooden sword in his belt. He's got like a, a broom handle between his legs, basically it's supposed to represent like the horse on a stick kind of thing. And there's a lot of really cool little details. Some of the details are a bit muddied, but you know, it's it's perfectly fine. I mean, I, heck, I got these for like, uh, these two different lots that I got together here. I got like, a, for like maybe eight bucks for all of them, so I'm not too bad about that. And they're real chunky, like, you know, they're, let's see, real chunky real like well molded together the bases are separate and uh, the bases are separate and uh, they look really really nice really nice the next one here I can't really tell he kind of looks like it makes you think of like the whole teacher's pet kind of thing because he's got like a blue ribbon that has 01 right here on him and he's got like a sign on his back that looks like it would be like a kick me sign there is like a uh, uh, like a a uh, industrial age kind of uh, almost steampunky kind of thing to these little minis, which is not that bad. I mean, I can still mix these into my D and D games and modern games and all that kind of stuff. Some of these minis will need some alterations, though. Like uh, I may try to figure out a way to fit, get that little sign off his back because it's gonna be a little hard to figure out, and the ribbon here I could probably fix. Other than, but like I said, I mean, not too much of a change to these. This next one is pretty interesting. It's a uh, it's a little boy, or maybe a little girl. I don't know, but uh, it's basically focus. Okay, there we go. It's sculpted to basically look like a tiny Sherlock Holmes. It's got a little makeshift pipe and everything. It's really cute. Details really neat, really nice on these. Some of the faces on the kids are a little. Are like a little hard to see some of the details but I think well that's good enough paint job to look really nice 
Now this last one threw me for a loop. I did not notice this when I bought this, but as you see, you know, let's get the little ragtag clothing here. Get a little suit, a whole little flower there. You know, patches on the clothes, a little, uh, just a little ragtag uh, munchkin guy. I mean, not munchkin guy, uh, orphan kid. But the back of him, he's got a freaking Siamese twin or a like baby crawling out of his butt, like attached to his back. Very fucking, uh, uh, I can't remember what that damn movie's called. <laughs> fucking, the old Arnold Schwarzenegger where they're on Mars. He's got that, like, Siamese, like, twin growing out of that real big dude's stomach. He's got that kind of thing going on. Even though some people, him, some of my D&D buds might not like this. I'll probably just, I'm just, to make this kid mix in, I'm probably just going to take, like, a razor knife and just cleave off the little Siamese twin here and use some green stuff to fix his coat. Because I don't think I can figure out any way to match that in. I don't really run a lot of games with a lot of mutants or Siamese twins and related. So I'm, you know, sorry, but that'll be some fixing on him. But, you know. Yeah, hey, I got them cheap. I'm not going to complain about it. That's too much. Now on to the adults. I'll start with this one. I, I don't know what he's called, but I call him the groundskeeper. He's got a uh, he's got a very ragtag, beggar kind of look. He's got himself a real mean-looking dog. He's got a, like, walking stick or a shillelagh, whatever that is. At first, when I got the adults uh, in these minis, I was a little, you know, thrown off. I was like, oh, man, they're a little too big for what I normally do. But they're it's mainly these real thick, hollowed-out bases. They give them, like, an extra few centimeters, I think, of, like, height. So they just naturally look like they tower over other minis. But they are pretty... They're, they're decently within scale. Just, you know, I'm, I do intend to take these guys off the bases and put them on the bases that I use. And I'm going to use these bases as uh, uh, objective markers and things kind of like how uh, kind of like how uh, uh, black magic craft put made like those little uh, frost grave uh, objective markers like those potions and the scrolls and stuff I'm gonna do that same kind of thing but just you know they're gonna look like they're on a wooden floor instead of in the snow but yeah I really like that I I kind of hoped that the uh, I was kind of hoping that like the dog would be a little more uh, not attached to the human, so I could like make a mold and have a do another dog, another dog mini because they just he just has like a he's got like that mean kind of look on his face. That'd be good for an attack dog, but eh, still pretty good for a mini. I mean, this would be like a really cool encounter. Maybe like a like a king of the hobos and his uh, m little rascals crew of pickpockets or something. The next one, now this one I actually do know the name. I think this one is called the Orderly. I was, this is actually one of the one of the main adults I wanted to get a hold of because he just kind of he kind of reminds me of kind of makes you think of Lurch from uh, the Adams Family, just a big, like broad-shouldered wall of a human being. He's got a little tiny scar on this side of his face, I think. Get in there and take a look. He's got some sideburns, a uh, very Armstrong kind of mustache going. I've been kind of considering the idea of painting him up like a, a butler. Like, give him the white gloves and everything. Because it would just be pretty cool. Like, this wall of a human being just opens the door. It's like, do you have business with the Lord of the Manor? If you don't, I'm going to break your legs. Because <laughs> just, I like it. It's really cool. This right here is one of my favorite ones in the set. Still wish I could have got the little uh, Alice in Wonderland one. But, yeah, well, I'm still happy with this. Now, this last one... I have no idea what he is, but it's not just the whole, it's not just you. This guy really does just tower over everybody. Very Slender Man-esque. I mean, get the focus here. There we go. Very Slender Man-esque kind of guy here. He, he, he legitly towers over like all of the minis in the set and like minis that I've got. So I really like him because he just like, he kind of just looks like that creepy undertaker kind of guy like you know he just drags away coffins and stuff or you know he's like that odd very unnerving guy that stands in the back of the back of the town hall kind of thing he's really neat these uh minis right here there is a lot of different minis i've been trying to find more because like i said i like to i want to make sure that i have a few more 
kid miniatures for the my campaigns and stuff, but mind your ears, and I slide these back in the, in the frame. With these minis, is like, you know, I'm trying to find more, but it gets a little harder. I mean, the, the, I have seen the uh, the full board games on eBay, but they're like hundreds, of, like almost like, a, like, they're pretty expensive. And I was lucky to get these in like sets of, uh, I got the, uh, I got the, uh, let me see here. I got the, the Sherlock Holmes and the uh, Slender Man ass guy on one set, and I got the rest in another, and it all together it was like eight bucks. This set took a lot longer than any of the other sets I bought from for that, from that seller, but you know, they, they arrived, so I'm pretty happy with them regardless. I might do a video on those as well, because they're all from the seller, just like they buy up board games cheap and then they sell the minis. And, uh, you know, I'm not complaining because I've got some really good, I've got some really good minis out of it. So I'm not too upset, and you know, I even I even managed to I even managed to give one set away as a Christmas gift, which that buddy of mine he had enjoyed them immensely. But yeah, I mean, if you can ever uh, if you can pick these up, I would suggest doing it, especially if you can get the kids. Maybe not these two right here, the Bucket Knight and the Coal Train Kid. I mean, if you can find a way to mix that into your game, then yeah, by all means, go for it. But I mean, like you know. Especially the kids, because, like, you know, getting children minis for your games is a little harder, I've noticed. Unless you're good at sculpting. Which I'm getting better at, I guess? But we'll see in the future. But, I mean, I'm gonna... I'm gonna pop up some, uh... Uh... I'm gonna pop up some pictures here of the minis that, uh, that after I... I've rebased them in these pictures. So that way they're a little more in scale with, uh... They look more in scale with normal miniatures like uh, Reaper Bones and Reaper Miniatures uh, uh, Reaper Miniatures Zombie Side Games Workshop a few few names that people know that way you can get a good idea as to like the actual size of these uh, for little fellows anyway I hope you guys hope you guys like the video I'll have more coming up and I'll see y'all in the next one Goodbye.